Hey guys, Bobby here from Wedding Film School and welcome to another behind the scenes video where we are taking you behind the scenes of a real wedding film. You can kind of look at each other too, if that makes sense. Pulling her nice and close. <laughs> Love it, keep it there, give her a couple more. So we're gonna cover a ton of content in this film. Grab a snack, strap in. It's gonna be long, but it's gonna be full of good stuff. Now we released a behind the scenes video just a little while back with Jared, and that one focused on solo shooting. Not all of our behind the scenes videos are going to have a theme. We are trying to crank out as many of these as we can because we know you guys love them. But this one actually does have a theme as well. This is a destination wedding for me. So it's a little bit unique. There are a few extra steps, extra tricks, things like that. I'm gonna be heading out to California, shooting just near LA in Simi Valley. So let's go ahead and dive into what that looks like, starting with what I'm packing. All right, so here we are with all the main gear that I'm bringing. Let's run through it really quick. Up first, this is the Sony a6500. I will have three camera bodies with me. They are all Sony's. This is the oldest one. It's just a C cam. I'll run it at the ceremony, maybe a first look, something like that. This is my handheld setup. Now I do have a video on this, which you can check out going through all the pieces, how they work, why I have this setup and why I like it. This is a Sony a7S II with the Sigma 24 to 70. Now I can change the lens. I don't do it too often. I've got the seven inch focus HD monitor and then a variety of things like the rails, the shoulder pad, the strap and stuff like that. My last camera is the one that I'm filming with right now so you can't see it, but it is a Sony a7 III and that pretty much sits on the gimbal with the 16 to 35 F4 lens. I love that lens, I love that camera and it works really well for me. I'll also have the small HD focus five inch monitor on that gimbal setup. And of course I will change lenses if I need to, but I always do have a second shooter and between these two combos, especially if I kind of assign my second shooter to tighter shots, I'm pretty well taken care of. On the audio side, we have the Tascam DR40. I love this recorder. I've used it for years and it has yet to fail me. Now I do want to upgrade to something with 32 bit float eventually, but this thing is cheap and it works great. After that, I have my lav mics. And these are the Tascam DR10Ls with the included lav mic. And I love these recorders. And last but not least, this is a backup. This is the Tascam DR10X. This I will plug into a speaker or the board in addition to the DR40, which is my main feed. And I like just having another audio source just in case. And I do have a couple videos on this channel of all these audio uh, devices, how I use them, why I use them, where I use them, stuff like that. But we'll be getting into that in this wedding as well. Now jumping into support gear, and I've got a little secret for you at the end of this. All I'm bringing is my gimbal, which is an original crane gimbal, like crane one, crane zero. I don't know, it's the original. I love it. I've tried newer gimbals, a lot of them actually, and I just don't like them as much. So as long as that thing is still kicking, I'm still gonna be bringing it. Additionally, I'll be bringing one tripod, one light stand, one monopod, and possibly my slider. And I'll also be bringing my Mavic Pro 2, which I forgot to mention earlier. But let's jump back into why I'm only bringing one of each of those things. And this is a tip that I have if you're doing a destination wedding. If you have a local team and you wanna use them, awesome. But if you don't, and you do use second shooters like I do, hire somebody local. Because what they're gonna do is they're going to bring some of their gear, if you ask them to, and I'll pay a little bit more for that. But it makes my life so much easier to only have to pack one bag. And of course, I do want one of the big things, like a tripod, right? Because I might send my second shooter home early. So pro tip, hire a local second shooter, especially if you know somebody, I trust him, and that of course helps as well but he's certainly making my life easier too. All right, so my first suitcase here is my big duffel bag. And I like using this for a checked bag. I'll put my clothes in the top. I'll put the support gear that I need in the bottom. But for this wedding, in the bottom of this duffel bag, I will have a tripod, I will have my monopod, I will have one small light stand. And then if I do choose to bring my slider, that will probably go in the top as well. Next up is one of my rolling hard cases. I, you know, I'd refer to them as Pelican cases, but this one is technically not a Pelican case. In fact, neither of mine are. And this one houses basically just my handheld setup. 
That is the one downside of this setup. It kind of requires its own case, unless I want to take it all apart and build it back, which I don't really want to do. So I've cut out foam to fit this exactly, and I do have room to fit a few other things in here as well. And those two bags, both the duffel bag and that handheld setup rolling case will be checked. Next up is my main camera bag, and this again is a rolling hard case. This is made by SKB, very similar to Pelican. And this is pretty much what has all of my camera bodies, my lenses, my audio gear, basically all the things that I could not live without should a bag get lost. Now I've never had that happen, thank goodness, but you do wanna prepare for that. And that's actually an important tip as well. If you have batteries like these, these are the Sony NPF batteries, uh, and I have about maybe eight of them. I bring these for my monitors, for some of my lights and other things. And if you are using these, you can't check them below the plane. They need to stay with you. So this carrying case is going to stay with me because it has all my important gear. It also will have all my batteries in it, among other things. And last but not least is my Peak Design backpack. Now I love this backpack and it carries just a few things. It'll have my laptop so I can make sure to back up my footage after the shoot and before I board the plane home. It will also have my drone in it and some snacks and things like that for the plane to entertain me. And last but not least in this top section, I will actually have my gimbal deconstructed a little bit and fit in this section, which I love. It works great. All right, so we are all packed up and ready to go. We're gonna hit the airport tomorrow afternoon, and we'll see you guys there. Got the bags all checked. Getting in was not easy, because I had too many bags. And uh, we're gonna go hit the lounge here, and uh, I'm gonna actually talk about something to save you guys some money on, uh, on checking bags. But first, gotta finish this giant water bottle. All right, so now we're here at the lounge. Um, we're through security. I've got my bag pulled, as is tradition. Um, but a few things that you guys can do to help in destination weddings. The first thing, especially with baggage, that's kind of what I want to talk about, because if you aren't careful, you, know, you can rack up some pretty big baggage fees. Um, if you're checking multiple bags, if they are over the weight limit of 50 pounds, if they are weird dimensions. Now you can do a media pass and that helps with some airlines, but not all of them. And different airlines have different procedures and stuff like that. So three things that I think can be helpful for any scenario. Um, the first one is you do have the option of shipping some of your gear. Now I wouldn't ship cameras or lenses or anything like that, or really anything that you needed for sure. But if you are shipping some bigger stuff or you're trying to take some bigger stuff or a lot of bigger stuff, like a lot of tripods or something like that, shipping is an option. The next one is to get it locally. So I mentioned earlier that I am having my second shooter who I'm hiring locally bring um, multiple tripods, bring a light stand, a big light, stuff like that. So that's always an option if you are utilizing a second shooter. You can also rent stuff locally or you can get it shipped if you have a location you can rent through. Uh, lens rentals or lens pro to go or something like that. Um, and then the third option that I think is really helpful and everybody should be doing if it makes sense for you and your, you know, personal life, because it does obviously play a role, is utilizing the, like, credit cards out there um, that really give you an advantage in business travel. So um, I love the Amex Platinum. I also love the uh, Delta Reserve or something like that, but also an Amex. Um, and those give you free baggage. Um, they give you uh, priority boarding, priority upgrades, a lot of, you know, that kind of stuff, lounge access, things like that. But when it comes to baggage, you can get, uh, you know, one or even multiple bags free sometimes, which can be really helpful. So I had to pay for one bag. I checked two, um, but that's going to save me, you know, $30, $40 each way. That's $60, $80, somewhere in that range. Um, in total for this trip. And if you're doing this a lot, that stuff adds up. So, all right, now we're gonna hang here for a bit, have a snack, have a drink, uh, get on the plane and kind of go from there. So we are here at Hummingbird Nest Ranch in Simi Valley, California. Made it through the airport, got everything back put together. We got an awesome couple. It is an awesome day out. It's about, 
I think it's gonna get up to around 80. So it's actually gonna be pretty warm. Um, this venue is insane. You guys are gonna see way more of it. It's just this awesome like $30 million mansion up in the hills. Uh, tons of like beautiful, I don't know if it's greenery, what's it called when it's like cacti and stuff, but whatever that is. And we're gonna go say hi to the bride. We're gonna start with the ladies first, um, shoot some details. The photographer's already here and she's awesome as well. So should be a really good day and I'm looking forward to it. Heavy breathing sounds. <laughs> now I don't actually remember where the bride's bridal suite. Excuse me. Hey, how are you? I'm Bobby. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Day's finally here. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Um, did Rachel come up already? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, the details, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I chatted with her, so we're gonna go get some of that. And then uh, my second shooter is Brian. He'll be here any minute, so you'll see him running around and whatnot. So what I'll probably do is I'll go find Rachel. I'll shoot your details and stuff like that. And then we'll come up um, once you're done with hair and makeup and just do some like finishing touches stuff. Okay. So I'll probably just chat with her. Quickly. Yes, we should do that. Um, it doesn't matter. Are you doing anything right now? No. All right, let's. Do you want to read it quick? Yeah. Are you cool if we go somewhere that's yeah. probably quiet? quiet? We will video you when you open the letter from him. Yeah. And then we won't have audio for that. So, okay. I mean, we will, but not like, you're not gonna be mic'd up or anything. I can, I'll go out like in the hallway or whatever. So you can have a minute to yourself. And then like, I don't know if you like stumble big if time I or cry, something, I'm you aware. can cry. You're allowed to cry. Okay. Um, but yeah, if, if you stumble or whatever, like you can just restart the sentence or, you know, okay. we'll edit stuff. So, um, cool. So I'm going to start this. I'm going to just put it right here and then I'm just going to clip this right here for you. And you are good to go. So I'll step out here and then um, you can just yell for me when you're done or okay. something. So the reason that we do letters before makeup, um, well, we don't do it distinctly before makeup or anything like that. But what we're doing is having her read the letter that she wrote. So I don't like um, having audio, you know, for example, if she's reading the letter that uh, Andrew wrote to her, it might say to my beautiful wife or something like that. So I want his words saying stuff like that if I do choose to use them in the highlight film. So I will have each of them record just audio of their letter um, before they get dressed, if that's when it makes sense or before they do their makeup or whatever. Um, and then we'll kind of facilitate the, cha the exchange of letters or gifts or whatever later on in the day. But this is just for audio purposes for the highlight film. I know the photographer had the dress. Yep. Do you see where they were? Yeah, they're up front. So I'm going to go hope that that's still set up and go get some shots. All right. So I like am super underexposing this. I'm really worried about that. Uh, so I think we can bring back some of those flowers and stuff, but that the bottom of the dress is like super shiny, you know? You don't need too much movement. That's like one step. And I'm gonna get one like static, just I like. I think you could like blur some of the sides of the bottom, like that tilt shift look could be really cool. Actually, I'm gonna go a little bit wider, get that whole door. And the bride specifically like, you know, not requested, but was like, I really love those Spanish doors. So I wanna make sure to incorporate that. So we got some good stuff there. Got a new tripod. We're gonna see if it can hold, uh, hold the handheld setup. This is the, uh, what is it called? Manfrotto, like be free. I don't know. Is there like travel tripod? Let's see how it holds up. This handheld rig is new-ish. It was partway through last year. Just wanted something new, wanted something different. Something that made me feel creative and whatnot. I really like finding what I like and continuing to make it work for me until I like have to get something new or whatever. These are my last video too. This is the zoom. Well, I mean, this is an ND filter, but this on the back is called zoom X U M E. I think I actually pronounced it wrong. Uh, and it just pops. It's magnetic pops right on the front, pop it on, pop it off for some, uh, ND filters, or I guess, you know, really whatever filters you want. Just might add in like a post zoom or something like that. 
All right, so we are wrapping up details. We have, I have to get one shot with just kind of everything in it. Um, so I'm gonna go do that now. Bride just started her hair and makeup. We will get to that. We're gonna wait till she's pretty much like done. Uh, and then we're gonna set some stuff up because we're also gonna move her. She's doing it in this room um, and we're gonna put her outside. That's what uh, the photographer wants and we're totally cool with that too. After that, I think she'll put her dress on and then we'll hop over with the guys for a bit. But we've got, we've got a lot of time on the front end of the schedule, which is actually really nice. Uh, yeah, we'll go shoot those details, lay them out and uh, yeah, move on from there. So light's a big part of good detail shots. We have this window light and it's not like super harsh or anything like that. Then I'm also usually looking at like, what's the background, I guess, in this shot. So I'm gonna be shooting more like down. So we got this nice like wood table, then arrange it in a nice-ish way. I don't know, which is not my forte. Um, usually I would try to shoot what the photographer shot here, but I missed it, so. I always want really slow, smooth, intentional movement. But yeah, I just want that to be really slow and smooth. Thinking uh, I don't have my prism, I don't think. For the ring shot, it's the 100 millimeter macro. You can check it out in our ring, ring shot video. Yeah, so I'm trying to get like the rings, but not have them be like giant, giant, like super overtaking the frame. Um, but I also want to see if we can get some, uh, some of the sky or the palm trees reflected from my phone. And then um, we're gonna have these flowers here too. So this is not my typical ring shot. I don't have my prism with me. I think I left it at home. So uh, we're still using reflections from the phone, um, but I do want something to kind of serve as foreground, but we're gonna use these and just kind of cover the frame a little and get some movement and some different colors. Where's uh, where's the groom at? This guy right here. Howdy. What's up, Andrew? How's it going? I'm Bobby. Bobby, nice Good to, to meet you, you man. Andrew. You guys are in your uh, wedding attire yeah, and everything, this, right? This is, how we're going. is everybody rocking the uh, for the boys hats at the <laughs> ceremony too? Is that how that's working? We were talking about it. It's probably right after. <laughs> all right, all right. Orbit's falling out over there. <laughs> uh oh, that's a danger oh, spot. Wow. Could be a good action shot though. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. Pure ball! Oh, it's pure ball! Oh, oh, um, so yeah, I, basically what I usually like to say is pretend you were reading it to Gina. Yeah. Um, normal volume, the mic's right there. Okay. I'm gonna step out. Um, when you're ready, you can just holler for me, or if you want, you can just pick up this mic pack and just walk out, okay, and cool. then I'll take it off. Uh, if I start over? Yep, so that's up, the other thing. Over. If you screw up like on a sentence or yeah. whatever, or like, you know, I don't know, somebody comes in and is loud or slams the door or whatever, just backtrack to the beginning of the sentence or whatever. So. Oh, beginning of the sentence or the whole thing? I mean, paragraph, okay. sentence, whatever. Okay, That's right. the magic Let's of editing. It. We can do Got whatever. It. Yeah. All right. What is Look. it? Look, come on. Just come here. He's like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> yeah. Hit my move. Go for it. Hit my move. Go for it. Can I do one more? Can I just get wide real yeah. quick? One more. Sorry, just a fake touch. So sorry. No, you're good. Gina, do you want to lay your hands in your lap with the. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Alright, Brian, I'm going to go super wide real quick. So my first shot is just gonna be like ultra wide from this corner. Okay, perfect. That's it. And then mom, you can actually lift up the dress and you can put your feet under if you mean oh, to. Perfect. Uh, to get a little bit closer. Yep. So sisters, I'm gonna have you just move for one shot real quick just so I can get her mom. Okay, so get a little bit closer here. Oh, 
So uh, let's see, we've got the bride in her dress. She's just finishing up now, but I got all the shots that I needed. Um, I've sent my second shoot over to get the guys getting ready. I actually typically like to be there. I don't know the last wedding where I have not been at the guys prep, but the way it's just working with the timeline, um, that's just what we need to do. So we are doing a bride reveal for the bridesmaids. Um, we're gonna have her walking down this staircase over here and the bridesmaids are gonna be kind of at the bottom of the stairs. Um, it's a pretty big wedding party. There's 16 on each side. So upstairs, it was just too cramped. So we're gonna set up two cameras for this. Uh, I'll be shooting this without my second shooter because he's with the guys. So I've got one wide camera um, just on a tripod. I wanna try to get the whole scene in that. So I'll show hopefully all the bridesmaids, but at least most of them. And then I wanna show specifically the bride coming down the stairs at that angle. And then I'll be running this kind of on my person. Um, I will try to get a closer shot as she rounds the corner down the stairs and then some close-up shots of different bridal or sorry different bridesmaids reactions. Could I have you guys angled like a little more this way? Give me a smile right there. Stunning. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. We're getting ready for the first look with dad. Um, so he's mic'd up, he's around the corner. Uh, we're just gonna wait for the photographer to finish up a couple more um, shots and then get all these people out of here so that they can kind of share a moment. We're gonna set dad up. Um, yeah, should be good. So you can pop on over here and then you're gonna be basically right where I am, something like that. Oh, over I was gonna the have back. Him closer to the door. Yeah, or closer to the door, that's fine. Right there's perfect. Facing. Oh, yeah, and you're gonna face that okay. way. Are you good? Um, yeah, let me get my other camera quick here. Are you gonna be, gonna be right I, okay, okay, let me move just because I got your hand in it. Okay. Set. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay, right. let me uh, just reset this up a little. Bobby, are you ready? Yep. Oh! <laughs> wow, you look beautiful. I'm gonna just reach in and grab this. Oh, pickpocket. Yeah, pickpocketing my own stuff though, so. Okay, silly, ready? One, two, and three. I love it. One, two, three, silly again. Uh, perfect, I love it. Wow, that's good. No way, wow. That is awesome. I was not expecting that at all. Yeah, right over there. Could I take um, this, this main out, or is sure? Yeah. Why all right, not? You sweet. Can. I'm gonna do that. Thank you guys so much. You got it, man. Do you mind if uh, either one of you or I could send Jared over just to test the mic, just so I can get levels? One, two, eight, eight, five, check. One, two, two. Cool. One, two. I'll probably come check this yeah, once the ceremony starts just because, you know, yeah. whatever. But I'm gonna have another source too and, and whatnot. Is that cool if I just leave this here? Yeah. yeah, All right, thank you guys so much. All right, so we're setting up for ceremony now. We've got the audio all set. Now we're doing kind of cameras, camera angles, lenses, whatnot. Um, so we have access to a balcony, which is really great. I'm running just a pretty wide, it's just a 30 millimeter um, just kind of a safety shot. So I love having a safety shot. Uh, I don't usually have a balcony available, but that's a great way to kind of get that safety shot. Everything's gonna be in frame, in focus. I'm like stopped way down because it's, you know, super bright out and whatnot. I typically like to follow the bride in on the gimbal and I think I do want to do that. Um, we're gonna have the 24 to 70 locked down and that's gonna ultimately be uh, on the bride's face. Uh, for vows and then the really you know the important thing of course with the groom is this reaction because they have not done a first look and then also um, his vows so my second shooter today shoots more handheld um, so he's not going to be locked down that's actually pretty new for me so I'm interested to see how this works he's going to be at the front of the aisle uh, getting people's faces as they come down the aisle and then he will peel away um, you know, at the very end. But first, of course, bride coming down the aisle. So I think that's how our angles are gonna stack up. There's a chance that we'll switch it. It always depends. I'd like to run a tight 
70 to 200 from the back, but I think I'm kind of sacrificing it for that safety shot right now, and I think that's probably the move. So yeah, should be should be a good time. Going upstairs. Would not put too much weight on it. And then will this door just stay open? Yeah, I'll leave All right. that one unlocked for you. Love it. Thank you so much. No worries. Nice, easy angle. And then, um, yeah, get like some parents and stuff because the parents are pretty emotional too. We'll have that as a stationary camera. And then um, there's a, we have a safety up there. Perfect. And then as soon as they kiss, I'll go in with you and track back. I just want his, I just want the tight. And then we can yep. move in. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Reception detail time. Woo! It looks sweet. It's a shame that we have like direct sunlight right now. So the reason that this is rough is because the sun, so sun's gonna set over the mountains here. Um, so right now it's at like, you know, 45 degrees or something like that. And it's just hitting like everything white straight on. And this is the direction that I need to shoot because I want like the mansion in the background. I don't really want the band warming up in the background. This wasn't set until just recently probably during the ceremony at some point, so not a whole lot we can do. Just gotta take what you can get. Typically what I'm looking for is like just a couple wide shots. Um, I'm gonna come back and get some wide stuff though on a slider too, because I brought it, so I feel like I gotta use it, but we should be pretty good here. I'm just right in the reception, like right by the green shrubbery walls. So let my second shooter know to come grab me because I always put my phone in airplane mode. That might be carryover from like one of the early DJI drones that used the phone. I feel like I got like interference or something once and like my drone flew away. But I don't like getting phone calls during it anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and try to get done in time. I've got my second shooter covering bridal party, the full bridal party, and then some family stuff which is now, you know, the bride and groom, since they didn't do a first look, bride and groom, you know, with the full family or whatnot. All right. You know, a lot of this stuff is looking good. I got some mountains, got some venue and whatnot. It's kind of like these random parking lots all over that are just like dirt parking lots. So it's like, you know, kind of not super ideal sometimes, but getting good stuff. We're gonna have a few drone shots that will definitely make the cut. Somebody knocked this over. Very good. Uh, so just walked up. I had left this totally out of the way. I don't know who did what, but found it on the floor. So luckily, it looks like it fell directly backwards somehow. In fact, you can see there's the damage. It's all on this thing pretty much. So I think the shoulder pad and the, the uh, holder for the battery pack took the damage. I don't see any damage. Um, I've never had that happen. So you guys were here for my first time in 15 years and like it's reading everything. So 
yeah, I think we're going to escape without any major issues. I think Brian's going to cover some family stuff, and we're going to go finish up with reception and then bride and groom stuff. So we're going to get some slider shots. This is the Rhino slider, and this is their old version. You can get nice and close to her, Andrew. You can give her a kiss on the cheek. Perfect. Go ahead and give me one smile right there. Ready, right here, one, two, and three. Beautiful, I'm gonna do another one. Forehead right there. And Gina, you're not gonna smile at me for these ones. These are more candid, so like, mm, like love it, yeah. Close eyes just for one. Look at each other now and freak out, yeah. Looking towards each other. Look towards each other, perfect. You can kind of look at each other too, if that makes sense, and yeah. And Gina, I kind of want you to put your arm around him, like relax a little bit, he looks a little too cozy. Like, Getting nice and tight again. Get your hand around him, looking at each other. Love it. Love it. Just Gina, look at me right there. Yep. Nice. And Andrew, I want you to two hands around her waist, pulling her nice and close. And in her left ear, so the one away from me, I want you to whisper something you love about her. You can kind of look in the hand. Don't laugh. <laughs> You guys can kiss or laugh. Yeah. Perfect. What's the one where you kiss your friends out of kids? That's a little different. Love it. Keep it there. Give her a couple more. Awesome. You're looking at each other and smiling while you do this. All right, now I want you guys, um, you can do interlocked fingers again. And then I want you to just like, this sounds weird, but just like feel each other's faces with your nose. And you can go eyes closed, just move it around. There you go, love it. If you laugh, it's not the end of the world. You can sneak some kisses in there too. I'm gonna pop wide for a sec here. Nice and close, some kisses. Awesome. And then let's have you guys turn towards me, hold hands, and just walk. We're gonna walk like four steps. All right, let's do it. Just walking towards us, looking at each other, nice and slow. Doing okay, pretty good. Those were, uh, I think like right when we got over here, the light was just a little too high for me. Um, so I did some silhouette stuff. And then now it's like exactly where I want it. We're getting some like golden shine through, some sun flares. It is a little different. I think I'm shooting a little bit darker than I normally do, just cause it's still, it's not like full on sunset yet. Um, but yeah, I'm getting some pretty good stuff. And I imagine Brian is too. Give her a kiss on like the cheek or whatever's kind of closest to you there. Yeah. And then you can peel back out again. <laughs> Relax a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> Going quick. Things are rolling right into each other. I'm gonna go find the dad, put a mic on him. So audio, we've got our main Tascam DR40. Um, so same thing we use, very similar to the uh, ceremony. So we've got the DR40 uh, plugged into the board. And then I put a mic on the dad because we are going right into, it's grand entrance right into first dance, right into a speech from the dad. After that, um, I don't know if I'll mic everybody up, but I just, I, I haven't been able to test levels on this yet. I don't even know that I'm for sure getting the mic signal and it's a band and I just, I don't know for sure. So um, just to be safe, I'm putting that on him as well.
more precious than gold. It can't be bought. With the windows down. Let's go. Rock and roll, baby. Wow, well, we finally made it, huh? All right, so thank you guys all for coming tonight. Um, I I know we're anxious to uh, get out and start and have some fun, so I'm gonna keep this short, about 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Thank you. And Andrew's mom, Sherry. Um, if it wasn't for them, so just kind of came out of what is a, a kind of a whirl, whirlwind of events. We went grand entrance, they came right down the stairs into their first dance, and went right into Father of the Bride's speech, welcome speech. That did not go as planned. Um, I specified exactly where I wanted him. He got called up to the opposite side, so not the backdrop we wanted. Um, lighting was fine though, everything went all right. Their, their dance was pretty short, which is different. Um, but anyway, so to kind of, you know, prepare for that for next time, um, I'm gonna see if I can get a mic stand. I didn't bring one with me, um, sometimes I do, but I'm gonna see if I can get a mic stand from the band if they have an extra one. Otherwise, I taped a big X on the bottom and I went and, or on the floor where I want people to stand, and I went and talked to everybody who's giving a speech um, to tell them where I need them to be, because we probably are gonna set up lights now. Um, we still have some nice ambient light, but I think in the next 45 minutes or so when speeches happen, it's gonna be darker. So um, we're gonna get going on that. We're gonna go eat right now. Good break. Uh, first one of the day. And other than that, I think we're good to go. So speeches are up next, um, but we've got a little bit of time before that. Yeah, so this is a pretty interesting venue. I didn't bring all my lights. I had my second shooter bring uh, his practical light, which I love but it needs power. And this is all outdoors, so we can't run a light basically on this side. We have a long extension cord, but we just don't have the ability. So we have to run the practical light from there. It still works. We're gonna have our toast givers from the side here. We want that light kind of hitting here, and we wanna be shooting from the shadow side. That's how I'd like to do it. The lights are all daylight balanced because I like the kind of orange look behind. Um, so like the string lights are going to look a little more orange for a wide shot, stuff like that. We're also running a torch LED as the rim light. Right now it's just kind of right behind them. It's going to go up higher and I think that's where I'll keep it. We tested it from the stairs. Uh, but I want to be able to grab it quick for because we're going right into dances. So we need to move that to the dance floor for uh, father-daughter dance and mother-son dance. So I don't want to put it up on the staircase, which is probably where it would be ideal, but it will work where it is. So that's pretty much the lighting setup, two lights, and those two lights will be moved immediately to the dance floor uh, for dances. Hello. Oh. Woo! There we are. So I was the one who had to channel my inner Gina, and so if Gina was writing a wedding speech, what would she do? She would make a list. Please. After a 32-year drought. And I just wanted to end with a quick thank you to Sherry Carsage for making my childhood incredible. And thank you to Rob and Rosemary for always welcoming us, treating us like your own. We're going to have Gina's father up here for a father-daughter dance. Give that going in just a moment. Enjoy yourselves. All right, Gina, let's bring up our beautiful bride. Where is she? So 
Most are wrapped up. Uh, also, parent dances. The night is just into open dancing. We did end up switching our lights a little bit. I mentioned earlier that I often like to use a daylight balanced light, even in a setting with a lot of tungsten lights. But in this scenario, it actually made sense to switch them over to tungsten. I was getting way too much spill off of other lights on their skin. Um, and it just made some for some weird skin tones. So we switched those over to tungsten, did everything tungsten, including dances, because we had to swap really quick. We went right into them. Uh, and then, yeah, they're in open dancing right now. Uh, we are setting up a guest video booth to leave like a message. Uh, so we'll be running that. And then we've got a few other random events like, you know, cake cutting, bouquet garter, that kind of thing. And we'll just be getting some, uh, some open dancing and walking around and stuff. So thank you guys so much for joining. We will be releasing this BTS, but we'll also be doing behind the scenes type video, uh, kind of a reaction to the final film. We'll be releasing the final film on this channel. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for following along. Please check out some of the other behind the scenes videos. We have tutorials, gear reviews, our weekly podcast, The Wedding Film School Show, and our weekly live film review on this channel, Wedding Film School. I will see you guys in the next video.